and no one knew Lyric better than her mother. Could you just tell us about her? Um, so she was strong. She was a very strong, um, strong-willed young lady. But she was, she was so heartfelt um, for people and for justice and for good things. Um, I've seen her rescue many a situation um, that she didn't have to be involved in. And she had a strong faith. Mm -hmm. How has, how was faith brought into her life? So we spent a lot of time um, talking about God or um, faith, things like that in our home. We prayed, we did things like that. But, you know, and I know during like the vigils and stuff, it seemed like the right thing to do to pray and um, stuff like that. But, you know, I'm not so sure anymore. That day, <clears throat> July 13th, you had just started a, a new job and your mom was helping out. Had the girls biked that area of Evansdale often? So I don't know that Lyric had ever biked that area. Um, and I, it was just something I heard that Elizabeth had some familiarity um, just because she was from there. Um, so I'm not sure if she'd been down to Myers Lake, you know, um, on any other occasions, but Lyric had no familiarity with that area whatsoever. And they were close. Sure. Did they spend a lot of time together as cousins because their age proximity or because you live near each other or all the above? Yeah, all the above. All the above. Or just because my mom did a lot of like um, babysitting or watching both of our children while we were working or um, helping us out when we needed it. So um, my mom was really a crooks for getting all the grandkids, you know what I mean, in the same room. When did you learn that the girls hadn't returned from their bike ride? Um, so I got off work at 1. It was like 101, and I was walking out the door, and my mom called, and she was like, Misty, you need to get here. We can't find Le Le uh, Lyric and Elizabeth. They went on a bike ride. You know, she had some things she needed to go do. Um, she said her and Kelly had been looking, and I said, I'm on my way. So I, I mean, I drove. I was only a mile down the road. I drove right there. I went riding around looking um, for them as well. Uh, no sign of anybody anywhere. And I, I, that was maybe only, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes worth of looking. And we pulled back into Heather's and Heather was pulling in um, in her vehicle. And she said that she had called the police. And, and then the police showed up over at her house and asked us just to sit there. And that now they would take over the um, looking around. Um, it was, I, I don't believe it was even 10, 15 minutes maybe that Drew called, who he was also with the, um, the Evansville police, and called from the, um, the lake that they had found the bikes. You were the victim in so many ways, but you weren't always treated with compassion. Nope. Why? When we had gotten down to um, the lake and this was maybe on like the second day and we were doing the searches and there was a reporter there. Um, I, I just, I went up and I was like, you know, I have a criminal history and I just, I mean, I'm just being really open about that because um, I'm sure that's gonna come up because I do know how judgmental people will be and I know how people think and operate. Um, and that's okay. It was okay with me. Um, my past is my past. I've dealt with it and um, I've, I've paid my, my time in so many different ways. Um, I knew that I didn't have anything to do with this and my only desire was really just to put everything out on Front Street so that we, you know what I mean? We could do our best at, at finding where these girls were, you know? I mean, there were, there were people that I had dealt drugs with in the past that I said, these are the people I bought drugs from. And, you know, and I told those people, I was like, hey, I let 
the cops know that we'd had interactions in the past and they don't care about that. They just, they just want to know as much information as they can to anything that could lead to finding them. And, and anybody that I had ever associated with was completely fine with that. You know? As the day stretched into weeks <clears throat> and into months, how did you manage going through the thing of living? So you, there's this weird thing. It's like it's called surreal. It's um, it's it's almost like you're. It, it's almost like you. So you're going through the motions of a day, but you don't. It feels so surreal. It's not real to you, and so like that's how it felt. And only like some strength within you to find an outcome to the situation is what moved you along. I know that I, I jogged a lot, so I'd go running, and I'd go running maybe toward Greenbrier, and I'd run past John Deere's, um, and any time I was behind buildings, I'd go search, um, like, I'd run over to their dumpsters, and, like, their bins, or things like that, and I'd just look. I'd look through everything as I went running. Um, I remember doing that just day after day after day, 